Welcome everybody. What's up? He's not on mute. Okay, we'll try it again. There we go. Welcome to the University Hill Commercial Area Management Commission meeting. It is March 5th, 2024, and I will call roll. Cheryl LaGuardia. Here. Trent Bush. Here. Tell Jones. Here. Ted Rockwell. Here. Andrew Shoemaker. Here. And I'll turn the meeting over to our chair, Commissioner Rockwell, for procedural items. Thank you, Lisa. Uh, first uh, thing up is approval of the January 9th meeting minutes. Do I hear a motion to approve the minutes as submitted? Second. We have a motion and second. Right, we'll call the vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries the answer. <laughs> Um, we have an outgoing commissioner here who has been serving uh, the city of Boulder and this commission for the better part of a decade. Okay, you can stop. <laughs> Don't want to yeah. Cheryl's leadership has been absolutely uh, essential to ensure that the Hill is getting the uh, kind of attention it needs to remain uh, viable and vibrant into the future. And so... I just would like to thank her personally for her service to the city. Thank you. Thank you. My pleasure. So, I might add though that we have invited Cheryl to join us at our next commission meeting, I think at least for the very beginning. We want to do like a kind of a handoff, a, a, a changing of the guard or baton passing ceremony because we will have. Um, one or two commissioners. So I also want to point out that we don't know how things are going to go with, with council. Um, Trent has applied um, uh, in interviews to be to continue um, in a chair on UKMC, but we don't know how those decisions are going to turn out. So certainly want you both to join us um, at the, the next meeting, um, regardless of what happens with council, so we can um, uh, effectively uh, well, Probably not effectively, but we'll try to thank you for your service um, and uh, have a little. Uh, when will council March reveal? March 15th is oh, that's the, Mark. when they got their selections. I reserve the right to call up anytime, Cheryl. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, I'm not going anywhere yet. Thank you so much. Um, moving into the next agenda item here in public participation. Do we have anyone on the call who would like to speak to the commission? I see Mary Gerlos's hand. She's Mary Alice, you should be able to uh, unmute yourself and speak. Can you hear me now? Oh, we can't hear you though. Can you hear me at all? No. I'm sorry. Um, let me. You're showing up as unmuted, but we cannot hear you. And the oh, levels are. Is it running on that laptop? Maybe there's a. It's the volume. It's, oh, that might be the problem. If the volume is not. Maybe the volume. Hang on. Echo. Is your volume all the way up on that computer? You can hear you. You can hear us though. Apparently, she's, back on she's muted. Can you hear me now? She's still having a hard time hearing you, Mary. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, there we go. So mute. We need to mute whatever else. I I don't know what else to do. We can hear you now. <laughs> Can you yeah. hear me? Just a moment. Hold on one second. Can you uh, move speakers on the other top? Actually. Should I try to keep talking? Yes, please. Ah, excellent. Okay, you can hear me. 
Okay, uh, just three things from the University Hill Neighborhood Association. Um, we're all really looking forward to the opening of the Hill Hotel in hopes that that will bring some uh, changes in terms of inviting more um, reciprocity between the commercial area and the residential area. I, we're very hopeful that this will be a, a positive thing. Uh, the second thing had to do with Lime scooters and we're eagerly awaiting um, the creation of these corrals that should maybe remove some of the, the scooters that um, litter our sidewalks. It hasn't happened yet. And the third thing is we're just eager to know what the status is of the 14th Street parking lot. And I gather that will be addressed today. That's all I have. Now I can't hear you. Send agenda from financials. Um, we had packets distributed to us. Does anyone have any questions regarding the consent agenda or fund financials? Seeing none, we'll move into Bill Boulder update from the Hill Merchants Association. Jake Dakota. Uh, got some things printed out. If you take one of each and pass it down. I think I've probably only printed it up for the commissioners, but there's like one or two extras. <laughs> Am I going to be able to control this from now? Should I have to control it from this? Should I stay there? Or should I... You should stay there. Yeah. <laughs> I, can, I can, whatever you tell me. Um, James, the commissioners have these. Or Andrew, did you get one? Yeah, you got one. Okay. So okay. Great. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So this is the slideshow. I'll do like an intro. I'm not used to this view. I think you just hit slideshow. That's is, which max is. There we go. Okay, great. So thanks for giving us some extra time at this meeting. Um, the goal of this is to present sort of a higher level overview of what the Hill Boulder has been doing, some of our accomplishments, some of our challenges. Um, obviously, I present to you guys every meeting, but it's kind of just day to day stuff um, and we don't really look at the big picture or, or talk about kind of planning for the future. So that's the idea behind this time. Um, I'm going to give a little intro. Dakota is going to hop in and talk about some of the stuff that happened before I came on 2020. Um, I'll talk about some of our accomplishments uh, after I came on and then Dakota will talk about kind of the future and looking forward. Next slide, please. So we're the Hill Merchant Association, uh, commonly known as the Hill Boulder. We're a nonprofit. Our goal is to promote culture and business, uh, thriving business community in the Uni Hill District. Um, we were originally founded in 1955 and were revived in 2015 after a few decades of inactivity. <laughs> if you want to speak to some of the history. Yeah. Um... So the most recent iteration came about when myself and a few other small business owners on the Hill were on UKMC. And at that point, city council had sort of made it their, one of their objectives to really breathe some new life, send some support and um, resources to the Hill to see if we couldn't get the needle moving in the direction that everyone was asking for. Um, myself, Karen from Al Barber Shop, and a woman who owns a, owned a shop that's went out of business um, were part of it. Cheryl was also a part of it um, in those beginning days. Um, we founded the nonprofit mostly because we sensed and heard that there was needed to be sort of a conduit to take what the city council wanted to put forward, wanted to support, whether it was monetarily, programly, um, through programs, 
through grants, uh, just sort of through public decree, um, that there wasn't really an entity in place that could receive and then implement these various things. Um, also, there wasn't in place uh, a group that could be that hub for city, for business owners, for neighbors, um, both younger and older, as well as the sort of the university as a whole that function. Um, so our, our aim in creating or reviving the nonprofit was to be that hub and conduit for different support mechanisms to put some new energy back into the hill. Awesome, excellent. Yeah, so brief overview of what we do. Like Dakota said, we're really an intermediary between a bunch of different um, stakeholders in the hill, especially between the city and between the merchants and property owners on the hill. Um, so we have regular meetings, obviously, with this commission, with uh, community vitality, with the university, the ambassador program, um, the, the visitors bureau, um, the chamber, the business owners. And we're really a resource for you know, if you have a question or something related to the Hill and you don't know who to ask, we're a good, we're a good bet that we'll be able to connect you with the right, per with the right person. Uh, so we do a lot of um, programmatic stuff. We host events whenever we're able, uh, usually through grant, additional grant funding. We assist with events hosted by businesses and outside organizations. Uh, we host regular business meetups. Currently they're quarterly. Uh, we send out a monthly business newsletter. Uh, we do a lot of, we're the marketing arm for the district. We do social media, Facebook, Instagram. We run the district website, and that includes a business directory, a directory of available commercial properties, uh, and a business resource web page. That's also the homepage for the new Hill Ambassador program. Um, and we host an event calendar on our website with events on and around the Hill. Next slide, please. Um, yeah, so Dakota's going to talk a little bit about some of what we did before I got here. Um, yeah, so in from those early days, um, we jumped at the opportunity to get the ball rolling in a few areas. Um, we created some taxation districts um, that would help get a little bit of revenue going. Um, there was really just a small amount from the parking was, was all that was available to our district. I'm sure you guys all know that's pretty much nil at this point. Um, but we did start do the Hill Event Street. Um, we, in, in partnering with the city, attracted a few larger national events like Slide the City that really brought statewide attention to our small district. Um, we also worked with different city initiatives to improve lighting and alley enhancements, um, planters, just the low hanging, hanging fruit that we heard from visitors to our bus business district, um, residents that live nearby that they wanted to see. And there hadn't been a mechanism in place to kind of take the funding, take the volunteer work and put it all together and make it happen. Um, so it was a lot of that. Um, maybe if you were to think of the things that we think of the downtown Pearl Street, um, the park, as well as um, downtown Boulder, events, marketing, things like that. We're a mini <laughs> version of trying to accomplish those things and taking care of a set district. Awesome, next slide. Uh, oh yeah, so here we've got some photos um, from 2015 to 2019, some of performances on the event street on the left side there, um, musical performance on the top, a conference on world affairs happy hour on the bottom, slide through the cities in the bottom right, um, and then that's an uh, event street logo that uh, we uh, worked with the city to have created for the unveiling of the event street in 2017. Yeah, and again, a lot of these brought together different groups, whether it's the university and, you know, in the past there have been talked about how Broadway really felt that this bridge, or not a bridge, but rather a wall that the university kept to themselves and not necessarily participated. And there's a lot of groaning that 
there were events and things like that held on campus that could have been in our district. So we worked with CWA a lot. We hosted them in our event street. Um, there's been times when the whole fraternal organization was at odds with the neighborhood. Um, and we found ways to bring them in through volunteer work and build bridges there. Um, so it wasn't necessarily just the Facebook posts or the marketing of live music, but it was really tangible ways um, to bring these groups that weren't always aligned um, to, to generally meet and, and do things together. Uh, so I'm going to talk about some of what we've done since 2020, which, uh, like I said, said, is when I started. So obviously 2020 and most of 2021 was concerned primarily with COVID business relief. Um, we did weekly newsletters to connect businesses with resources, keep everyone informed on changing restrictions, uh, relief, financial relief opportunities, PPE, um, connecting the business owners with the outdoor dining program that the city was uh, piloting at the time. We also hosted a, a socially distanced live music series on Fridays in the summers of 20 and 21. Um, that the goal of that was not only to promote outdoor dining and, and a safe way to experience art and culture on the hill, but also to promote the hill in the slower summer months, which as we all know is the hardest time for the hill businesses when students are gone. Um, we in, like, uh, in conjunction with that, we collaborated with a local marketing organization uh, to create some banners that you'll see on the next slide that really helped um, for the sense of place and just the district branding, which is another kind of another lack on the Hill. And so uh, all, a lot of that was made possible by ARPA funding that we started receiving towards the end of 2021. Um, that allowed us to really increase our staff hours, increase our budget, we made some big uh, marketing and communications improvements thanks to that, got back to social media posting once there was things to promote on the Hill again. Uh, we started running some paid ads where we were able, we redesigned our website, um, got back to our monthly newsletters once we were kind of out of the heat of COVID um, and along the way supported events here and there hosted by other organizations. Um, and then once the pandemic ended, we got back to our in-person merchant meetups. Next slide, please. So up on the, on the left side here, uh, these are images from the Live from the Hill performances. So in the background uh, behind that performer, you can see that banner that we had made that was um, all the sponsors of the Live from the Hill events uh, and some logos that that uh, marketing company made for us event street banner. So all these things were really important for district branding and just creating a sense of place, which is often lacking on the hill when you compare it to other districts in the city. Um, graphic that we used on social media at the bottom, photo on the right side shows the outdoor expansion program in 2021 um, on the hill event streets. So that's the sink and cafe ion. And that was, that was the area that we were activating with those events. Slide please. And then in the last couple of years, we hit the ground running in 2022 with that ARPA funding. That was an additional $10,000 a year for our organization. So we were able to hit the ground running in 22 with that. We made a ton of communications improvements to uh, increase kind of the official feeling of the Hill Boulder as an organization. Um, we moved our newsletters to an actual newsletter service, HubSpot. Uh, that, that, you know, lent a more official feel to these uh, mailings. We were able to launch a new website on the City Light platform, which is the same platform Downtown Boulder uses. So not only creating some cohesion across different parts of the city, but also the platform is designed specifically for cities and business districts to be really um, easy to navigate, uh, easy to navigate the business directories, really good for mapping, um, along with that, we hired a photographer using some of that ARPA money. We got really high quality photos of the hill. If you go through our directory, those are up there. They've got uh, really nice photos of the outside and inside of each hill business at the time. Um, and so along with that, we, have a, we had a business directory as well as an available commercial property directory, which is huge for anyone who wants to come into the hill, open up shop on the hill. Before that, we had 
like a PDF that we would try to update and, but this is just much easier to use. And our business resources were launched as an actual web page on our site. Um, so if you remember something from a newsletter or you need to, you don't, you didn't write down the ambassador phone number or something that's all up on our website. Uh, like I said, that's where the ambassador, um, the ambassador program is housed under that uh, <coughs> business resources. So with the help of Downtown Boulder and CU, we launched the Hill Ambassador Program last year. Uh, we started having quarterly meetups in the Crown Institute space, which is the CU building kind of across from the sink. That again, just kind of lending this more official feeling to our organization, uh, giving businesses a sense that they belong to a district that is supported and that has you know, official meetings that can be attended virtually, that slides can be presented. We were uh, standing around in the lobby of the Fox before then, which we were grateful to use, but this is an improvement for sure. For sure. Mm -hmm. um, and we hosted a really successful event this past summer, a family fun block party. It was similar to Live from the Hill. The goal was to activate the district during a slow season, but this uh, project was also aimed at addressing some of the concerns from Hill neighbors and also uh, Boulder residents as a whole who haven't felt, who've reported that they feel the Hill is not as family friendly, is not as clean or safe. And so activating the Hill during a slow season, but also responding to those concerns and trying to create a, something that appeals to families with young kids. Um, we got a lot of great feedback on that. A lot of um, a sense that perceptions were changed. People said, you know, I I haven't been to the Hill in years, or I didn't think it would be this clean, or I thought I was gonna be nervous to walk here. And so that was really important for us to see that, you know, the, the perceptions are still there, but the reality of the Hill is improving. Um, and that's kind of just another indicator of how important it is for us to keep getting the word out, I guess, and keep, um, creating opportunities for people to come to the Hill and see the improvements that we're making. Uh, we've continued to support the Hill Hotel project, which we're very excited uh, to see it's opening next month. Um, that kind of like Dakota said, that's been like a decade long effort uh, from many different stakeholders. Uh, and then another big, big uh, effort from us last year was supporting the ordinance 8590, the land use change and helping businesses um, understand that, helping connect city with uh, the city with business owners and also helping them get through the uh, land, the use review process uh, in response to that if they did want to take advantage of those later hours. Slide, please. Um, so upper left, screenshot of our new website on the City Light platform. So there's tabs at the top uh, that allow you to get through the, the um, business directory, the and, and the event calendar and the resources for businesses. Bottom left is our amazing Hill Ambassador team lead, James. Um, power washing, the ambassadors have made a big difference, not just for uh, sense of place and safety, but also just actually getting trash up off the streets and graffiti removed. Um, they've made a huge difference. Top two photos on the right are from the block party. We had a sweet cow ice cream truck, a, magician, a face painter, a balloon artist. Um, and there's some families enjoying those. And then bottom right is just an example of the um, images that we had taken by the professional photographer that are up on our website now. Slide, please. Uh, this is just a, a, this is to show the impact of the new website that we launched in 2022. So. This, this is Google search data that shows how successful our page is on Google searches. So this data starts in November, 22. The website launched December, 20, uh, 2022. So uh, ignoring the dotted lines, which are incomplete data from 2024, the start of this data were basically close to zero impressions on Google, close to zero clicks on Google, and then up to now, we're up to um, about 80 clicks a day and about 6,000 impressions a day. And our metrics from last month cumulatively were uh, 2.4 thousand clicks in the month of February and 150,000 impressions. 
in the month of February, which is just a huge difference and really, you know, except for some spikes that have to do with paid advertising, the majority of that increase is just from this city light, this new platform that ranks us higher on Google, um, that it's just, it's indexed better by Google. And so we appear higher and we get more impressions. Uh, so, I mean, that's, that's something we couldn't have done without this ARPA money. It's made a huge difference on our visibility and our, the kind of, yeah, the visibility of the hill online. Next slide, please. So I'll talk a little bit about some of our challenges and then I'll have Dakota hop in. Um, like I said, a lot of what I've just uh, recounted has been possible thanks to that ARPA funding that started in 21. That is gonna run out at the end of this year. And so a big challenge is figuring out how to not lose this progress that we've made over the last couple of years. We've been, you know, making some really good strides, but also, you know, inching forward in a lot of other ways. And, and we don't want to lose that momentum. We can't currently, the Hill businesses can't currently afford membership dues. There's only a couple businesses on the Hill, as you guys know, who can afford, you know, even an extra couple hundred dollars a year. Um, we tried to go down the bid DDA road. There was a lot of talk about that um, surrounding the ULI tap last year. You know, there, we would be the organization that we would make the most sense to spearhead an effort like that. We don't have the hours or the money to do that. Um, that, that is, yeah, so that, that's a funding structure that would be amazing to have. And we just don't have the money or time to, to get that going. And we're losing um, the profitability of it as, as time goes on. Uh, and, and finally, you know, I've mentioned these two hotel projects. These, are, these have been heralded as kind of like these panaceas for the hill. And they're going to help so much, but we need to make sure that they're coming into a supported district and that the district isn't, you know, losing, <clears throat> the district association isn't losing half of its, you know, uh, half of its operations right when these two projects are coming in. Um, they're, they're going to be these anchors for year-round business, and we want to make sure that as the Hill Merchant Association, we have the funds and the hours to support them and capitalize on that, that anchor business. Slide, please. Do you want to jump in? Yeah. Um, so that leads us to um, asking for the money. And that we just, I, we and I believe it's just supremely crucial that the Hill Boulder continues to have $20,000 a year to operate for the next three years and to count on that. Um, that Funding um, creates the support for us to continue all of these collaborative efforts. It allows us to be at the table and in the meeting with the hotel, with the conference center, when ultimately we're competing against downtown Boulder and their marketing machine in attracting those guests and getting the signage to those guests to send them in that direction or across Broadway. It's, it, it's some areas collaborative, but you know each district is working really hard. And our district is represented by two unpaid business owners and a part-time brilliant employee. Um, and we need to know that we can focus on the work that needs to get done in the next three years rather than chasing down $500 grants to just keep the website on. Um, we have had um, a meeting with uh, Bettina, the new CEO of downtown Boulder, and are considering what the best future for the Hill Boulder is. Um, that conversation and that growth is something that I think a three-year timeline <laughs> is reasonable, but a nine-month timeline is not. Um, if we were to head down that way and partner, I think the ability to put together a bid or something similar would be a lot stronger. 
we would have three years of growth and sales and business from the two hotel, well, the hotel and then later the conference center to support those things. But yeah, we, we're looking to you all for the help to pass on the word to city council that um, having those three years that are current funding would just be huge to us to focus on, on the work that needs to be done. Um, you know, we, as you can see from all the slides, like we take our cues from what the community is telling us they would like to see in our district, whether it's family friendly projects, we have face painters and ice cream and family friendly music, whether it's activation at night during the pandemic, something to revive it a little bit. We found artists who are also looking for an outlet. Um, cleanliness, safety, we've worked with the ambassadors. Um, and again, I wanna open that to you all and to you know, inputs you may be hearing as well. Um, how can we better tune what we're doing to be more efficient and to make maybe better use of, of the funds that we're asking to be able to count on? Dakota, do you have a, 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 like a suggestion of what we can do to help you rather than just talk to city council members? Is there, some, is there a particular action that we can take or? No, I think, I, I feel like we have a good plan in place and we have a lot of good strides started that a, a portion of the the time, the limited time resources we have in the past years has been spent on tracking down small grants and small, yeah, yeah, just grants and that to not have to worry about the funding in the three years and focus on these pieces, um, I think would allow us to continue championing our district with the hotel being completed in a month and then the convention center and just make sure we're at the table representing the district and you know the neighbors as a piece of that and the university as they'd wish to be connected with us. But um no, we're just yeah, we're at this at this place where uh, we feel like it, it's crucial to have three years of knowing that will be funded and be able to focus on this time of really solidifying the past. Colin, can decade. I add something? Yeah. You know, the city for, I don't know, the past 10 years or so out of general fund has, has um, committed $10,000 a year, which didn't allow for much. And as you can see, the addition of the $10,000 ARPA money has really elevated um, the ability of the Hill Boulder to get to a, a, a much more um, effective place as an organization. And so that's where the 20,000 comes in. It's the 10,000 that the city has historically uh, dedicated as marketing funds to the Hill Boulder, um, but the the addition of the ARPA funds really put it over the top. So that I think is is the request in the history of the finances. Is that is that is there a I don't know, Chris, if you know the answer is the ten thousand is that expected again this coming year? It's really we need to, you need to you need to build another ten on top of it, or is it that you think that that even that bottom ten is going away? No, I, I haven't heard any indication, but I, it's kind of been on a bit of, this is how we operate. You know, Jake represents meetings, the invoice, you know, we- It's never a sure, it, it's- Yeah, I- At any moment that could go away <laughs> because the general fund supports the district anyway in a very significant way. So it's just kind of waiting you know, holding your breath to make sure that each year 10,000 is committed for marketing funds, which, um, you know, 
Yeah. And it's not a place we like. We're in a place the district's about to launch. We've all been working on it. We were at the meeting at the sink earlier in the week. We all felt the excitement, like the buildings are built. And we're feeling confident that in three years, we'll be able to be off of the ARPA and off of the general fund, if that is. Like our goal is to be self-sufficient or through a separate funding mechanism outside of general funds and other earmarks from the city. If, if the city wants to partner, great. But we feel like there's the infrastructure and growth that we can capitalize on in the next three years and take the hill boulder, whether it becomes a partner with downtown and there's funding through that or on our own, we'll have the ability to, to make that sell to our, our constituents. So we, we're gonna address this at the end of the meeting. I know that, that our letter is, is the, people thinking that it might be helpful for us to put into our letter yeah. a request for additional funding for the, for the hill boulder. I mean, Shirley, because you've got some experience on both sides of that. I mean, I think that would be, I know they typically like only three requests and the three requests we have, but if we could insert that. It can overlap for some of these. Yeah, yeah, it can overlap in you know, number three. three. Number three, yes. Yeah. Yeah. We could even um, consider, now that we're kind of discussing something that might come later in the meeting, but um, reprioritizing these so that it's being added to one of them and moved to a different slot to demonstrate what, what how we feel about that. Impact. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Now, um, so the total ask is 20,000 per year. That's, so it would be essentially a commitment for three years for $60,000 roughly, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and I mean, uh, you know, take your time and review it, but that's what we've been operating on for, for a bit. And, you know, pretty, I think it's pretty great what we've been able to, to accomplish. And, um, I'm generally you know, sympathetic to this appeal and um, would love to have some discussion about it. But tell go ahead. Sorry. Um, is that 20,000 sufficient now and for the next three years with inflation and everything going? Um, should it be more? It, Just wondering. I think it's sufficient. I mean, it would more would more would allow us to have a bit more of a presence at some of these citywide meetings, um, and it would just allow more engagement. I would see. I feel like you can see via the metrics, the website's performing well. We're able to update it and engage on social media. I think to a sufficient level to take advantage of those platforms. I think additional funding, um, you know, outside of a very large grant for something like infrastructure or something like that would just allow further engagement in the city and, you know, the Hill Boulder having a, a bigger, more spots at tables. I also think that, you know, there's been a lot of um, talk about activations on the Hill and that takes a lot of personnel or even um, assistance um, for people like <laughs> Jake who've done a lot single-handedly over the years. So sure, more is better, um, more can happen, but I think if it were to drop back down to the $10,000 that the city historically has provided, um, that's moving backwards. And yes. that's not where um, the merchant association should be moving at this point with these opportunities ahead of us. Yeah, if it dropped to 10,000, the website would stay updated and that would be it. It's just, it, it's too big an ask to, to keep the other stuff going at that level. It's just, you know, you, you guys get it right. It's just, we're doing the first terms we care and just at some point to run the line.
So do we want to work in this calendar? We're going to do it later. Um, before we move on to our next agenda item, I just want to open this up to make sure people have, if anyone has any concerns or would like to ask any questions of the Hill Merchants Association, this is your opportunity to do that. We'll discuss um, revision to this potential revision to this letter to the council later in the meeting. So now's your opportunity to speak to these representatives. I just want to thank you for all your work. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Second that. Yeah, for sure. It's definitely it's on the right trajectory. And that's why we're all here, right? Mm -hmm. To keep things going. So yeah. yeah. Thank you. All. Yep. Thank you very much. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. Appreciate the time. Yeah. Absolutely. We'll move into the next agenda then. Um, the University Hill marketing efforts from visit C visit Boulder CEO Charlie Moffat. Oh, I didn't get my slides done until like yesterday, so I didn't get them submitted in time. So I have paper copies of the slides. With me today is Tony Lewis, who is our Director of Marketing and Communications. So she oversees all of our marketing programs. Um, and she wanted to come and meet you guys. Okay. And uh, listen. And then Emiliano Ray Carrera, you guys, I'm sure I'll know him, but he had a family sick, a kid sickness. So he planned on being here in this group. Packets. I may have two more. You guys have to share on the. That's Um, I think a lot of you know who we are and what we do, but I just wanted to give a quick overview so you kind of have an idea of what tools we have in our toolbox when it comes to helping market the help. Um, our mission statement is to strengthen the local economy by inspiring visitor connections to build its vibrant landscape and unique culture. Um, the visitor economy is a pretty big business in Boulder. It's also the second highest uh, revenue generated for the state of Colorado. We bring people in, we invite them in, they enjoy all of our amenities, they go to our restaurants, they go to our hotels, and they leave the tax money. Um, that's a, kind of a beautiful thing. I can make you a copy of the okay. um, We are the official destination marketing organization for the city of Boulder. Uh, we're dedicated to bringing in leisure visitors, business meetings, groups, conferences, anybody that wants to come to Boulder, we're trying to market to them and talk to them. Um, we're focused on the visitor potential. So we look at conferences and arts and culture and history and different types of um, tourist experiences. And you know, the goal overall is to enhance the economic welfare of the city and the tax money that comes in um, benefits the community. Our role has evolved over the last several years to focus on things that affect Boulder's brand. So we do pay attention and get involved in things like homelessness and diversity and equity and inclusion and sustainability efforts for our environment. So we're kind of working on various programs for that. Um, we're structured with three main departments, our marketing and communications department, our visitor services department, and our meetings and group sales. And marketing communications is all that Carlene does. So she focuses on marketing our destination and managing the brand of Boulder. We have our lovely Boulder, Colorado, USA website, um, which reaches or engages over one and a half million people per year. We do a lot of digital advertising. Um, the Visitor Magazine is new. We just came out with that um, in January this year. We usually used to have a whole bunch of different brochures. We still have some of those, but we produce all of those. And then uh, Media Relations, Boulder's kind of a, in a golden spot right now with Coach Prime. We've gotten a lot of attention. We have the Michelin last year. We got a lot of attention from that. So we're um, 
entertaining more and more travel writers and we're getting a lot more press out there than we usually are used to. Um, so we do have someone that's dedicated to the effort um, in our company. Visitor services uh, work with all of our hospitality industry partners, which is hotels, restaurants, uh, experience providers, um, retail. We're trying just to bring that community together and we offer a variety of services for them. We do have an, uh, an event, our arts culture events grant program. Um, which made me think about the hell. Have you ever applied to We've been a recipient, yeah. Yeah, okay. for the live music summer mm -hmm. great mm -hmm. concerts. We're, yeah. we're going through our applications now. We should be deciding uh, by the end of this month. So I will put a little extra nudge in there for you guys. We didn't apply this. Oh, you this, didn't? This round. Okay. But we've gotten it in years past. Okay. Um, we offer a lot of def destination information services to uh, visitors before, during, and after their stay with us. We manage the staffing and the management of the physical visitor information kiosks and um, centers around town. And then we've been investing quite a bit in data research, um, knowing what's going on with the trends, how do we provide this information to some of our partners, and just really understanding the market more. It's been very expensive. Um, to invest in that, but last year I initiated around the state of Colorado a um, data research consortium for all the destination marketing organizations in the state. And if we pull all of our money together and buy it as a state, we can gather all the information in a much cheaper way. So that's what we're just starting to, um, we got our dashboard just last month. So we're pretty excited to kind of dig into that. And then the meetings and group sales is attracting new business. Um, so obviously the, the limelight and the moxie are on our radar in a very major way, um, generating leads, going to trade shows. We have an incentive program. So when the cost of the hotel room is higher than maybe competitive hotels done on uh, the front range or the 36 quarter, we can help um, offset the cost so we can bring in these groups without it inhibiting them from doing that. So that's a big part of the selling process. Meeting planner relationships are key to all of it. And one of the things that we've been talking to Naria and the city about in terms of safe, clean, and, and care for is that when people come to these new hotels and this conference center, this conference center in particular, if they have a bad first impression, it's not a good thing. I mean, these meeting professionals, these meeting planners are professionals and they study destinations, especially when you get to groups that are 800 to 1,000 people, they want to know what are the experiences? Is it safe? What does it look like? What's the experience like? And they dial all this in to determine if they're even going to come or bid or look at the property. And we need to show up in a very strong way when this comes out because it's kind of a hot new button for Boulder to have a conference center for the first time. And so we've been talking to Maria and the city folks about what are we going to do and how can we help um, so we don't get blacklisted by some of these meeting professionals that communicate with each other on what's good and what's bad about a destination. Um, conference services is when they, they arrive here. How do we help them with venues, transportation, visitor information, tabling at events? So we have a team of people that help that. Um, the next two slides is just to let you know that we've been thinking about this. Um, I presented at our board meeting these two sides as part of the presentation, but it's really our overall initiatives and priorities in addition to all the things that we do. And the hell district's on that list. It's not in order. So I don't want you to think that you're fourth down the list. It's not that way at all, but um, we are very interested in helping the hill with branding and marketing and making sure that it's safe and clean. Um, the slide below this, you can't see it because it's not an electronic version, but that left box is really picture after picture after picture after picture after picture of all of us going around the Hill District and showing what's wrong with how it looks and feels and if it's not cared for. So the broken sidewalks and the leaning lampposts and the, the roadways that are confusing and the bikers that are racing down the hill and you know the homelessness stuff that's been happening. I know it's improved to some degree, but we wanted to sit down and just take Maria through each of those things one by one and it was very effective. And she realized the sense of urgency to, to solve some of these problems. And she said she'd back, be back in touch with us in a couple of weeks and that's this week. So we're waiting to hear from her. She's gonna to talk to all her folks um, to see what they can do to help support that effort. So with all that said, when we get into 
marketing ideas for the hill, I want to just start by saying, let's assume that it's safe and clean and drink water. So we don't have to think about that right now. And we can really just look at how we can help the hill market uh, and how we can help you bring more people to the hill to help your businesses. And we have thought through a lot of ideas. Um, a lot of the tools in our toolbox are in the last couple of slides, but really we just wanted to come today and listen and hear what you guys want. Um, we don't want to dictate or have ideas on our own. I mean, you guys, people that know this district the best. So what do you want the Hill to be known for? What kind of vibe do you want the Hill to have? How do we, how do we market this for you the best way? What stories do you want us to be telling about the Hill? Um, there was a great thing that you guys did last year, the year before with the historical side of the Hill, which is a beautiful video that you guys, I thought that was great. Is that what you still want? How do you want the hill to look? I mean, do you want people to come in and put murals up on the side of your buildings? And if you do, do you want them to be historical or do you want them to be music or do you want them to be diversity or do you want them to be whatever? You know, like, do you have like a thought of how you want the hill to be branded and how we can help with the marketing of that? Um, and then you guys, I talked about this a little bit, Jake, is you know, the relationship that you want with downtown Boulder partnership with the city and with us. I mean, we'll work however you guys want to work. We are here to serve you. Um, we do have funding to help with a lot of these initiatives. It's part of our contract with the city to provide services to um, the hospitality industry, which includes all of the merchants. Um, but I just don't know what you want or how we can help you the best. And one of the ideas we had was just a, um, we can talk today all you want, but also maybe setting up a like a focus group to sit down and just kind of dial in some of these strategies and ideas a little bit more concretely so that we can really start to deliver um, on some of these ideas. So we can come back to that, but just so you know, the website, we have a lot of people that come to the website. We've started to draft a few pages, a landing page just for the Hill, Insider's Guide to the Hill, top things to do on the Hill, shopping on the Hill, we can add, subtract from any of those as you see fit. Um, it sounds like you guys already have a newsletter, but we could also, if you want to, we could help with that. Um, we could send it to our list. We can send it to your list, but we have partner newsletter. Um, we have a visitor newsletter and we have what's the, our, our, our sales and newsletter meetings. And meetings. So we could add a column just for the Hill in our regular newsletter and you can do whatever you guys wanna do, we can help, but we have resources to do that too. Um, social marketing, we have a lot of people on Facebook and Instagram and LinkedIn mm -hmm. and all of those. So we can start, once we fine tune this message that you want, we can start putting those reels out and messages on that and then hit the press. Um, press releases, articles, testimonials, a lot of those things that we can we can write and get out for you guys to um, and finally, do you guys want a visitor kiosk? I don't know. You know, I think it'd be kind of cool for there to be a spot for people to go to get visitor information. Um, another idea is there used to be a popcorn cart that used to ride around in Boulder. We could set up a real person with popcorn and visitor information on big event days if you want. We have our VW bus, Delilah. We all love Delilah. Um, so we can bring her out and she can be there as a global visitor center for the Hill activities. We have a great partnership with the Hill, I mean, with the CU. So we already market for them, the graduation, parents weekend, homecoming, CU games. They have a great big database. We could put some stuff in there on their website for when parents are coming in or alumni are coming in to, to market the Hill. And then finally, what we came up with just helping with events. I mean, you guys do live on the Hill, but we were or live from the Hill. We came up with a few others of groovy boulder days or be a college kid without the classes kind of thing. So we can brainstorm all you want on some of these things. And we're just truly excited to, to be invited to talk to you. Um, we have been very eager as you all have, I'm sure, um, probably less a year than you, I would say, but we have been so eager to see these hotels come to life. Um, we did get a message yesterday that the Moxie is gonna be May now instead of April, just so you know. Um, but we've been meeting with them regularly. We've been meeting with the limelight regularly. And, um, let's do this. So, thank you. Yeah, it's a lot of resources. Yeah, it's a lot of resources, and we're excited to like dig into a new 
program. Yeah. I'm sure that we'll, we'll all have all sorts of ideas, but I, my first kind of question is how much coordination um, is currently happening with the Bowler and the Merchants Association? Because it does seem like there's a synergy there that could really help both sides of that equation. Yeah. Um, Emiliano is like the guy for the hill, and I wish he was here today, but he he would love to be the, the contact long term for the hill if if that's the fit, but we have coordinated with you. Um, I just don't know that there's been that much to coordinate on, honestly. Yeah, I'd love to connect for it. Yeah. yeah. So we're we're ready. I mean, part of it too is that you know, there's this dichotomy when you're in a situation that if we're gonna draw attention to the hill, we want the hill to be um, beautiful and welcoming. And so visitors have a good first experience and it's been a bit of a, and I, and I look at these pictures that you showed earlier and I'm like, wow, you guys were really vibrant at a certain times. And is it just been since the pandemic that things started to get neglected or has it been longer than that? It's been longer than okay. that. Multi-generational. Okay. Right. I think that the, the, I don't know that we're going to end up being able to, speaking for myself here, not necessarily the entire commission, pave over what the Hill represents. It is a confluence of a lot of different people. And um, yes, we'll, we'll be able to improve what it looks like, but it also will require maintenance over time. And I think that's one of the things the Hill has struggled with is to have enough revenue to kind of keep a, a stasis of you know presentability. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Bummer. Well, but but I mean, it, it's no positive note. This is I mean the 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 this is no uh, uh, this is not meant to be negative to your organization yeah. at all. It, it's just that the hill's been neglected for a long time. These hotels oh. are finally now doing what we had hoped they would do, which is. Um, the spotlight on the hill as a result now everybody's got to pay attention so it's exciting Very i'm nice. fired up thank you <laughs> some of the businesses are ready i think um getting the property owners um on board to help create improvements on some of the properties is, is a struggle that the hill has had for a while so I think a lot of constituencies in to your point. Mm -hmm. yeah, you, we've got the, the actual business owners, but then you have the property owners. You've got the city, you've got the merchants association, you've got the university, got the visit boulder. There's there's a lot of different um, entities there that if we can coordinate those forces, yeah. um, I think that we'd be in much better shape than differing opinions on how that could all work. I don't know that there's anyone that wants the hill to continue in the place it's been in for the last 70 years or whatever. I mean, you know, 20 years. Um, so, I, you know, I, I would welcome conversation around that. You asked about a, a focus group. Talk about that. Um, I would love to, partic to partic uh, participate in one. Right. Um, if you get more than one other person from this commission to do that, <laughs> We're going to end up declaring that at a public meeting. Okay. So you you may need to figure out a way of navigating that part of it. But we we talked about this in our retreat this last year. We might even have notes that we could share yeah. as a way of a foundation for that conversation. So if we hosted the meeting, does that change? No. Okay. <laughs> okay. But Cheryl's very game now because she doesn't count as well as <laughs> you. <laughs> <laughs> but we could also do it in two separate count. groups, right? Because two of us could be there, right? Mm -hmm. That's right. So there's yeah. four right split here. Split it up in a focus group. Right. Yeah. And I imagine we would want to bring people from all of those different entities that you mentioned so that we get a good diverse group of opinions. Yeah. One thing that you might also refer to is in the packet for today's meeting is the results of the UL, ULI TAP grant. And there's description in there of people who participated in an activity very much like what you're suggesting. Um, that could give you a good starting point as well in terms of how to, how to get conversations going, who to invite. But obviously the rest of us are, you know, 
would be happy to participate. I, I think we, you know, just each one of us end up having a lot of um, opinions and, and thought, lots of thought about what the Hill represents and what can happen there. So, yeah. yeah. Emiliano is really good about yeah. getting to everybody. He too. is. Yeah. I mean, he walked up and down the mm -hmm. hill on whatever last week to get everybody there to the right. gathering. And um, yeah, he's he's a great guy for this this type of role. I wanted to also mention, and I kind of hesitate because it's not set in stone yet, but um, with the two hotels that are coming in town, um, we're working uh, with the hotel partners on an improvement district. It's I hate the word tourism improvement district. So we're going to call it the hotel, the Boulder Hotel Improvement District. Um, and we're in a feasibility study right now to see if the hotels would be interested in forming a district where they would pass an assessment of a, a percent or two onto their hotel guests and come up with a, a separate fund that would be used dedicated only for the, the benefit of their businesses. Um, and if this happens, then the money that we currently have in our budget that's focused on the sales and marketing for the hotel industry in Boulder would be available for other things. And the only reason I mention that is because right now with our relationship with Downtown Boulder Partnership, we um, help with the visitor information and the staffing for the VIC down there. And we pay them every year um, a grant from us, which is $20,000. And so it could potentially, if we were to formulate this TID, um, and we worked something out with you guys, we could possibly just give you some money to help with your merchant association, in addition to all of the other things that we want to do to help the help. So it's not set in stone. We still have to go through a lot of council ordinances kind of stuff, but um, the hotel community is very much behind the idea. And so we just need to go through the course and hopefully it'll go through and we can open up some new revenue streams for not only us, but for our partners in, in this uh, Boulder community. Would that mean that the Moxie would come out of the UGID district? No, because it's not, it's different than a bid. Okay. Um, and we actually can't do a bid formation or formulate under the bid statute because of, you can't have a TID and a bid in the same area, if you will. So this would be under a home rule, okay. which is how it would be set up with the state. And this has been done in, in Denver, Aurora, and Fort Collins already, these TIDs, and Loveland and um, Longmont are in process of doing one, and so we're like, hell yeah, <laughs> let's do that. So it's an extra layer on top of what, um, what's already there, it wouldn't, right? It wouldn't, for example, the, the, the Hill District wouldn't lose funding because all of a sudden the hotels would go, yeah. No. Right? Okay. yeah this would be to actually market yeah. This would be to, the money would be for the hotels to decide how to use basically, but they would want it to improve their revenues, bring more people in, fill their hotels, increase occupancy. So it actually would help the hill quite a bit. And it's all, all hotels or just all, all hotels. All hotels. Yeah. Yep. City limits. Yeah. So that's 21 hotels. And some of them are meeting space hotels and some of them are not. So mm -hmm. each of them have their own needs. So I'm talking to all of them to see can be helped with but it's worth mentioning oh i forgot this shoot <laughs> this is a public meeting yes it is hello thank you that's all good i mean what i say <laughs> i really appreciate your advocacy for the hill with Maria. by the way i just want to make sure we return to that um, that, that's so important to have uh, various organizations around that are supporting the city and supporting tourism to the city um, speak of the Hill in positive terms, but also in constructive criticism phrases that can help us you know, improve what's happening there and, and really get thought and attention and resources put towards those. So I really appreciate that. Thank you. Andrew's on it too. It's the Connectors group. Yeah. Yeah. Right, right. yeah. But these people, I mean, they've been around ex city council, you know, leadership positions, and they have known that the the conference center is a need for twenty years now. And so now that we're here, they want to make sure we do it right. So I really appreciated the group. There are a lot of smart people, and they care very much for the hill and what's going on there. And, and we'd love to support that effort any way we can. 
It's good stuff. What was the, the grant that you mentioned that we didn't apply for? We have an event arts and culture grant program. Um, and the applications opened up in January and we're going through the application process now. And it's, you know, it, it's usually for um, organizations that are starting up or that just need some baseline funding that are not covered by the Arts Commission. And, you know, and, and maybe that may change depending on what's going on with how you guys are organizing. But um, usually it's just, Seed money for, yeah. for example, the because I used to be over yeah, there yeah, yeah, as well, right. the, like the Burgundy Festival, um, put an application in. And so the, the goal is to provide seed money for um, organizations to start and then become self-sustaining. During the grant program last year, we, we gave the SYNC for their 100th anniversary $10,000. For instance, we gave... Um, the Museum of Boulder for their Black History exhibit, $10,000. And those are the two biggest ones. And usually they're between $2,500 and $5,000. But, um, and we have a partial matching uh, grant from Create Boulder to help with that. So it's a good program for, you know, bringing in more little events and seeing if they can make a go of it. What are next? I mean, you're looking for for feedback. Yeah. Where, how, how, do, how do you want that? What are the next steps? I think we need to look at what you've already produced. And if someone, if you have, I mean, I can look at these notes to see the ULI TAP grant information, but if you have information from previous meetings, that would be helpful. And then we'll just reach out and set up a little meeting. Um, maybe Carlene can help with that. And it'd be great to do that in the next few weeks, knowing that the Hill Moxie is gonna open in May. So we can, I mean, a lot of the stuff we can put together somewhat quickly, but others is gonna take a little more time, but we'd really just like to start to develop, if you haven't already, just develop that, that identity, the real identity that you want going forward. So I'll, I can coordinate getting you the ULI UL, tap. I don't know why that's so hard. Um, <laughs> no, documentation. And I think that we have notes from our retreat from before Lisa. So I'll follow up with Lisa. And I'll get that to you in the next 24 hours or something right. like that. Um, the other thing I'll mention is that the city is, at, I think we might even talk about it here in a minute, um, the uh, ideas around wayfinding and yeah. that sort of thing. So that process is sort of, in process but not quite gelled yet it's probably something also you'd be interested in seeing and paying attention to so and i don't know whether it's it's there's any proprietary um issues or whatever but if we if we have with the hill boulder some great photos that have been taken last year that make the hill look good um and uh <laughs> And there, and and that's a use to you your website or whatever. Maybe there's some coordination. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, yeah, I wrote that down at the bottom of the okay, yeah. piece of images so that yeah. we can. Any way we can visualize and present more manuals that helps a lot. I think coordination between the two websites can be really important, yeah. right? So that you're, you guys are attracting a certain kind of clientele, and if they need deeper information, there is already a resource there that can be linked to and more information. Yeah. yeah, and I'd love to talk to you about, you've got such good traction with your website, how we don't cannibalize any of that traction, and we can continue to keep the hill front and center, and we're not taking all of that attention, but giving it to you, so... We, we work closely with downtown Boulder on that, make sure we're not bidding for the same keywords and um, competing against one another. So the whole world. Yeah. All right, so I, I'll encourage you all to have a continuing conversation with the Merchants Association. I'll commit to get uh, documentation to you in short order. Okay. Um, and then we'll stand by and wait to hear uh, from you all on together and having continuing this conversation. Right. Okay. Yay. Right. One I thing I would say though about the ULI kind of grant that some of the information is now behind us because some of the recommendations have already happened. Yeah. Um, and then also there's a lot of talk about the alley beautification and things like that that we may 
as a commission to discuss that that's not the number one priority. I'm just saying that for some of our mm -hmm. visits there and talking so that we, you know, we may want to just qualify some of their recommendations through this side. And we do that in the, in the not meeting meetings or whatever those, the focus groups. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, that's kind of the point to the point of making sure you're aware of the discussions with the city on what wayfinding beautification looks like and where it actually yeah. will be rather than things we've talked about in the last five years. Yeah, I'm wondering if your conversations with the city are the same conversations that we're having with the city on signage for the hill. It's probably the same conversation or similar conversations that downtown Boulder's having. And you know, like there's a lot of conversations about this stuff right now and having it organized so that we're not like stepping on each other's toes. But also I think the current wayfinding is temporary too. So that that's that's what I've heard too. It's, it's temporary, so there's an opportunity to think longer term about it. So the signage that will be developed is not. I mean, I would love the to end all be all. Those big wrought iron signs that go over the gateways of cities. I think that'd be awesome for the hill, but yeah. you know, we have pictures of that. That's, a pretty nice part. That's more of a longer term. And that's part of a bigger brand yeah. vision as well. Yeah, right. The pizza. The quick fixes and then the long term solutions. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Questions? Yep. Thank, Thank you, you very much. so much. All right. Well, we reached that story section of the agenda, which is matters and staff. The staff matters. <laughs> Who would like to go first? So I'll start um, to introduce the staff members that are presenting on various topics. We do have Elliot Labonte here. We don't have a formal presentation, but there was a question at the last uh, meeting related to fiscal year 2023, year end financials. So um, in your um, funding, uh, fund the health wrap that's included in your regular packet, the 2023 is closed. So those numbers are accurate now, accurate representations of what we actually um, did in 2023, as um, in years past, given the limited um, uh, sources of funds for the uh, UGID fund, um, we've been trying really hard to make sure that we're keeping our um, uses of funds lower than the sources of funds. And so we've been able to do that um, in 2023. And we will continue to strive to do that so that we can keep the fund in um, healthy shape as we make some of these long-term decisions around how to utilize the uh, proceeds from the sale of the Pleasant Street lot or um, future investment, either 14th Street lot or elsewhere. So happy to offer up, Elliot, if there's anything else you want to share or if you have any specific questions about how um, we closed out the year. I'm happy to save some time and move on to uh, Regan, if that's the desire. So um, having no questions, now that I wish Charlene um, would have stayed. I don't know. Well, I did give an update at the Boulder Connectors Group, and she was part of that, so okay. she's aware. Um, so we, as always, at Community Vitality have been working really hard to deliver on the expectations of the community um, in many ways. And Regan has been a champion of a lot of the stuff you've already been hearing about, about in this meeting and her strong partnership with the Hill Merchants. Um, and so Regan's been leading, um, uh, first, first of all, uh, led the, the grant application for the ULI TAP that led to a lot of recommendations of things that we have been making great progress on um, and continuing to make progress on. So without further ado, I'll pass it over to Regan now that the slides are up. Thanks, We're here to share what's coming next. Awesome. All right, yeah, I'm excited to give you all an update on hill revitalization efforts. So as Chris mentioned, that'll include an overview of ULI TAP final report, which we finally received and is in your meeting packet, and then some of the initiatives that we're working on currently and then kind of looking ahead. Uh, 
Um, just a reminder, kind of bringing us back to the purpose of this work and that we're really trying to enhance the district's vitality and generate positive economic growth. Um, as a reminder, we went to council last year and gained that support and direction from them to implement short-term revitalization strategies for the Hill, which includes projects that consider connecting, activating, and enhancing the district's identity, which we've all discussed, um, as well as these long-term strategies for redeveloping the 14th Street lot. Um, and of course, these strategies will help boost the district's resilience given some of the challenges that we've seen, um, as well as many of the upcoming changes that we've already been talking about this evening. So the opening of the Moxie Boulder, as well as the Limelight Hotel and Conference Center. So ULI TAP, Urban Land Institute Technical Advisory Panel Program, it is a bit of a mouthful, but we finally received the final report. Again, um, that is in your meeting. Packet. As a reminder, we convened with the TAP back in June of 2023. The list outlined here was pulled directly um, from the report, which was identified by the TAP as an immediate action plan for the Hill. So just to quickly go through these, that includes exploring greater connectivity, particularly along the 13th Street corridor, exploring and implementing short-term activation opportunities throughout the district, as well as on the 14th Street lot, deregulating those liquor licensing rules that were unique to the Hill, which of course has already happened and was a huge accomplishment for the business community, um, initiating a neighborhood rebranding campaign, exploring other long-term district funding mechanisms, such as the Downtown Development Authority, also known as the DDA, um, or a business improvement district, a bid just to help fund improvements and contribute to that long-term financial sustainability of the district. And then lastly, initiate a long-term redevelopment plan um, for the 14th street lot. So those were kind of at a high level, the key takeaways from the report. We do share, uh, plan to share the report more broadly. So please feel free to share with your network um, at this point as well. But now I'll dive into some of the initiatives that we're focusing on now that speak to some of these recommendations, unless you all have questions specifically about the report, but we can save that till the end. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so we're working on implementing pedestrian wayfinding and in an effort to get wayfinding signage up quickly with the anticipation of that increased visitation and foot traffic that we'll be seeing we are planning on replicating um, the existing wayfinding signage that is currently installed downtown in and around downtown. So we'll be installing it in and around the hill, including on central corridors that connect the hill to downtown. Um, and the wayfinding signage design is on the right hand side here. We're currently finalizing landmarks as well as locations for the signage. And so our intern will be doing a lot of the work in Google Maps to kind of calculate the walking and biking distance in minutes as well as which direction the arrows should be pointing. Um, huge thank you to Trent who has been super helpful in um, drafting up the locations for the signage for us well, as well. So this has been a really collaborative effort in partnership with the DVP as well. Um, but the intent is that this is a temporary solution that can be implemented quickly while we strategize something longer term, potentially more engaging. Um, the idea is that it will eventually be better than just signs with arrows. So if you've seen the signage in Boulder Junction, we recently implemented gateway signage there. So just thinking about something a little bit more engaging as we strategize for the longer term. Um, another project that we're currently working on is a partnership with Roots Music Project. So if you're not familiar, they are a local nonprofit music incubator. They help um, local and emerging musicians, artists gain visibility by showcasing them in local venues and in front of various audiences. So we'll be using ARPA funding to partner with them on the Hill to host a three-part music event series from June through August. 
um, on the event street this summer, which is super exciting. And so those events will likely span from 5 to 9 p.m. The dates are yet to be determined, um, but essentially they will showcase a feature or feature a talented youth artist as an opener to emerging um, local acts and then one established regional act. So that's the intent and there'll be a three-part music series on the event street. Um, so really looking forward to that and we'll definitely promote it more broadly once we nail down those dates. And then looking at next steps, um, they're divided into short-term efforts, other city-led initiatives, and then looking ahead at longer-term efforts. In the short term, we're exploring piloting events or other unique experiences, um, potentially pop-up activations for the 14th Street lot. We're working on potentially painting the pavement in certain areas. So for example, we're currently in discussions with the Moxie developers to install a creative or artistic um, painted crosswalk at Pleasant Street and Broadway, rather than having them just install a standard crosswalk uh, there for their development agreement. So we're in discussions with them to do something sort of creative. And we are investigating new murals, working with Streetwise, um, particularly behind the gas station at Pleasant and Broadway there. So sprucing up that alley on the back side of the gas station. And then we're working closely with the forestry department to assess tree canopy improvements, potentially planting more trees where possible and looking at installing new grates and tree guards depending on resources and funding. Other city-led initiatives, civic area phase two, which is of course being led by the planning department with a sub support from CB and other city departments, um, which includes an exploration of connectivity improvements from the hill to downtown. Uh, later in the year and on my work plan is to investigate what a cultural corridor might look like along 13th Street. And then again, led by the planning department, improvements to the Arboretum Park. And then lastly, looking ahead, um, just beginning to strategize and plan for the redevelopment of the 14th Street lot, pulling recommendations from the ULI panel as a resource um, and likely bringing on maybe a consultant to help us determine what that redevelopment plan will look like. So happy to answer any questions about the report, about what we're doing now, about what's to come. In our last meeting, we talked a little bit about some events that are coming up this summer, large, larger musical events, and then also looking forward into the football season as well in terms of activations for 14th Street lot. Um, are you thinking in those terms as, as far as piloting projects in that space that could help? Because we already know that there's going to be foot traffic. What's the thought process there? Certainly in the realm of possibility, I think at this point, we're really just having preliminary discussions about what is possible for that space, um, but happy to entertain ideas. And we, we definitely want to activate that space sooner rather than later. So, yeah. I would add, I want to be really clear and careful that we are not party planners. The city doesn't engage, <laughs> we're doing on employee party, party planners. What we are is we try to be effective facilitators. And so if there's a community partner, if Odessa has a group of folks who wants to come and activate space, uh, we would absolutely want to partner with them. That's similar to Roots Music Project. They're the ones, they're approaching us. They want to do this on the Hill. They're sensing some um, possibility and energy on the Hill. And so we want to work to facilitate groups coming to us in the 14th Street lot, certainly on our list, especially during the summer months as prime location, if folks are interested to activate, but we're not actually physically sure. um, doing the party planning. Absolutely. Um, August 7th and Wednesday, Thursday. Yeah. Thursday. Yeah. Thursday. 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 Outdoor concerts on the um, CU lot in the district. Is there, 
uh, seventh and eighth, seventh and eighth, Wednesday and Thursday. It's two days down, down to two days now. Just kind of following up on Chris's point that you guys are party planners. Mm -hmm. I don't know that I was, but yeah. So if someone were interested, if, if a business is interested, is there like a standard playbook that they end up getting like a, a, a fact sheet on this is what it would take to activate on this space? Is that something that's in development, should be developed? Does Lane have that already? I would not say that there's any standard playbook for anything in the city, um, <laughs> but I would say that again, so Community Vitality does have, house the Office of uh, Special Events, and there is work going on right now um, to help make that process more predictable. Mm -hmm. um, and so again, we facilitate, uh, folks come to a, with us with some crazy ideas. And so it's hard to create, oh yeah, great. Here's your, here's your um, toolkit for your funky, whatever it's gonna be. Sure. But we do wanna make sure that we're, you know, we have a continuous improvement philosophy of it. That we do want to provide better tools, so it's not a um, you know uh, six month uh, permitting process for your one day event. Um, at one point, there was talk around having a set traffic plan. You know, some of the things that are um, that happen the same way on the same in the same space could be provided to streamline uh, the process. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so that's certainly part of the conversation for Event Street, for 13th Street downtown. We do have certain streets in town that are well attuned to have a, a set um, uh, you know, traffic control or where tents can go and all those things so they don't have, doesn't be yeah. reinvented yeah. each time. So that's certainly part of that work. Yeah. If I could offer um, one asset that we do have, sorry, Matt Chazansky, senior intern. It's an interim senior <laughs> something. Um, <laughs> one thing that we do have right now, I think we, you're right, we need to improve and we got to move in that direction. But um, for this summer, um, Community Vitality does have a very smart person at the helm with Justin Greenstein. And so, you know, I'd be happy to share the link to the special events website and anyone who's interested should get in touch with him. He's really great to talk through some. On the, uh, the tree, the canopy, that, you know, that discussion, mm -hmm. it feels like, and we've got that after the conversation we just had with Charlie and that, that triangle in front of the gas station. So it's a pleasant Pennsylvania. It's like right there, right on Broadway, right yeah. on the 13th. Um, mm -hmm. Because there's, right now, I think there's seven or yeah, there's trees seven. that are all dead with those great things that go around them, the protectors. Mm -hmm. If there is an opportunity to actually turn some of that space uh, somewhere with walking tours into mm -hmm. posting up the VW bus there, I would hate for them to replant that without us at least discussing maybe a better use of that space than just a cluster of trees because we've talked walking through that that's such an opportune area, especially if there were a chance to do a, 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 kiosk. a kiosk of some sort or that or, or again or that, that bus. Yeah. I would just I'd, I would hate to throw good money after something that maybe then we couldn't change into a better use of that location. But the thought of having that bus sitting right there, talk about a way to actually get people out of the hotel to come up, right? And we're trying to get people to come up to the hill yeah. and not just go downtown. Yeah, no, that's great because the reality is we likely won't be replanting there. I just yeah. went to that location with forestry last week. Technically, the trees are still alive. They're really struggling. Um, but that that location tends to be very popular, uh, a popular spot for people to pull the trees out of mm -hmm. the roots. And so it just, they're continuing to put money into it. And it's just not. It just, it feels like it's been a losing battle because those trees yeah. just, they won't, whatever the reason, they're not going to thrive, right? Yeah. But maybe we can repurpose what, how we're thinking of that space. It's a dead space. critical, oh, go ahead, I'm sorry. No, 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 I'm just baffled that uh, people are pulling these trees up. I apologize. Well, they, they, yeah, kids do kids things and they <laughs> run past small trees trying to hang on. So it's a critical piece of real estate, really. Um, the the walking tour that I did with Trent the other day, I think, um, oh, Chris, you and I also 
that triangle ends up being visible from both hotel spaces um, in a way that is really valuable for promoting the health. Um, and so that ends up being a space that if we can utilize it correctly in terms of framing the hill, even maybe with an arch or who knows what, parking a van there, <laughs> um, it, it, it ends up being a, a real um, asset for, for how we approach just word of mouth, people seeing it and, and then going, I'm curious about what's over there. Yeah. So one yeah. is the immediate term versus long term, right? Archway, all that is right. long, long term. The other signage and things talking about the history of the hill and everything, that's longer term. But so that's a good point as we strategize. Just in short term. The long term wayfinding yeah. strategy. Mm -hmm. But in the meantime, way. just not to sit down, <laughs> put a bus there. <laughs> We will take that into <laughs> <laughs> it's the official recommendation. <laughs> Any thoughts on UI, ULI tap findings? Um, there's there's a lot in the packet there, um, including recommendations. I, I kind of, that's why I kind of mentioned it to Sean, just because there is such a heavy discussion of beautifying the alleys mm -hmm. and. Yeah, I, I believe. The, I mean, from the packet you sent us, it talks about the alleys a lot. Mm -hmm. it talks about using the alleys as transportation, which we had talked about when we thought the hotel entrance lined up with that. But then after our personal visits, felt like that was maybe not the best use. So that, that was the only thing that kind of jumped out at me was that that was something that maybe we needed as a commission to, to guide the way I those think, results were. I think there's some nuance there yeah. too, because the alley that runs behind the 14th street lot may end up coming into play here. Yeah. Um, if you're trying to drive people from the hotel over to an event activation on that parking lot, the alley is the faster way to get there um, rather than having to walk all the way over to Broadway and then up. Um, you're actually walking past all the, the businesses that are the traditional hill businesses and then over. So it's probably a nuanced It's discussion. nuanced, yeah. But, and that was exactly the point that I had. I don't want people taking the alley yeah. in certain places, especially behind 13th Street, if people were to continue up that. So I, I think it's just a come to me to talk about. Yeah, I agree. But just making sure that it's not, it just felt pretty heavily emphasized. Mm -hmm. And well, it feels like that similar. one alley that goes behind Smelly Deli is, mm. is a problem. Yeah. And I think if we had to tackle one alley, and I know there isn't funding for alley improvement at this point, but downright begging landlords to let us even paint the back of their buildings, um, it's that's probably the scariest spot on the hill, I would say. It's not that well. Yeah. But, um, Scary is because not first here, or it's scary is because of how it was. Um, well, I will say that when we've had high school events and I've seen high school females start to walk toward that alley, I would send security to watch, you know, just to make sure. I mean, it may not be that way today, but it certainly looks like it's got the potential to be a dangerous spot. Yeah, I think safety and security versus beautification. I mean, that, I think it's a, like you're yeah. saying, it's a kind of conversation. Better writing. Yeah. Any other thoughts beyond, say, the alley recommendations that you have from the tap that we want to make sure we are addressed or spoken of? I, I just think. Um, the activations that there's a lot of weight put on to activations and there is no um, vehicle for those activations to happen unless um, different parties come in and participate and that there's an efficient way for some of those things to happen. But I, I do think that the district has will have more appeal for other organizations to come in and, and activate on a more regular basis, but it's not easy. Not not an easy 
thing. So it it really takes a more than Jake, who's yeah. been responsible for a lot of the small activations on the hill. Seems like a related discussion to business development on the hill as well, that there, there's a need for a certain amount of energy to be spent and resources and person power to be able to drum up that kind of interest and-, and get There were some businesses. There, there was a couple that had a business that would do an event every summer. Mm -hmm. um, we do an event every summer. We did, you know, the bigger, whatever, string cheese event on the hill. And then the guy who owned the corner, not the corner, Roma, what was Rose it? Bruce. After Espresso Roma. Espresso Roma. Yeah. Um, you know, they liked participating in those summer Sundays on the hill when we were closing 13th Street, not necessarily the event street. So I think if businesses are more successful as a result of the additional foot traffic and um, all of that, we might find more people willing to participate at that level again. But it came down to basically two businesses doing all the activations, which was tough. So I would just say, it's a great thing to say that the district needs it. We just have to uh, be practical about how, that, how we can strategize to make that happen. Well, it's a request for more money to the Hill uh, Merchants Association. Does that also help with that? Um, it can help with some of the planning of that, but um, Jake is one person. He works for the city. He works part time for the Hill Boulder, and um, it requires more of a team. So I would say if we got additional funding in their pocket, that's kind of what I was alluding to. Some assistance for Jake, where he's got the know how and he can hand off certain tasks, like you know, reaching out to sponsorships making sure the traffic plan, the application, the special event application, um, it's probably, uh, or if the merchant organization has um, more mer merchants participating on a regular basis, the way it used to. And it wasn't, you know, it wasn't that long ago that there, there were more events and there was more participation. I would say it really took a downturn in the past whatever, five or six years. Maybe one wonders if there's any sort of synergy with visit order that can help with that too. Um, I think there's a lot of help. Yeah, there's a lot, yeah. yeah, there's a lot of interest. So, okay. Um, do we have um, like a timeline on the temporary wayfinding? I would imagine I can get, and I mean, we're working on finalizing the locations for the signage as well as the landmarks that will be on them now. And so I would imagine over the next two to three months, we can have it. You know, we have the designs, we have the designer, you know, we can print it. So two to three months can be installed. Before graduation would be ideal. Yeah. If we can. May 9th. <laughs> <laughs> My son's graduating for the public record. So. Anything else on that agenda item before we move on to the next? We're kind of running a little short on time, but I, I think we have time for discussions. So. Anything else around that? All right. To Charlene's point. Um, the big question is, how do we want, what do we want the, the hill to be known as, I guess, well, that, that rebranding and all I, my only comment is it really should be different from downtown because it's people, a, a one plus one, not more of the same because we're not.
I mean, that's, there's a real, uh, I mean, obviously we think about, about the, you know, sort of the film that we put together to shoot our first thing. We push for the hotels and also obviously music was a was a theme and the, the fox is a is a is a huge part of that. Um you know I I I keep thinking backwards like history, but obviously there's a forward looking um, issue. Well but well. the past was really pretty rich for yeah. a long time. Yeah. And it was differentiating from yeah. downtown. I think yeah, that's absolutely. the that's the point, right? Yeah. That the, the Hill District has super rich history. And you know, you can look forward, but you have to, I think, especially if people are dropped on the corner of the University of Butler, we talk about this, right? They need to know why, you know, why is that different? And those are the things. So you can only talk about some of the past and talk about the vibrancy of current and future. But I you, I think we need to really. The foundation is some of that historical stuff and why it different and why is it special. Yeah. And I think the university has a big part role to play in telling that story as well. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it's the home. And I think that the other thing I think we're going back to the chapter real quick. Um, I think there was some conversation or some mentions of university, but I still think there's there needs to be a cohesiveness there because part of the degradation of the hill has been the university taking all of their events and moving them. To downtown Boulder. So I think in our conversations, it's something we need to make sure that's loud and clear. And I know, you know, talking to Lori and see, it feels like there's a, they have a vested interest and they want to make sure that that changes. Right. But I think that's part of the conversation we need to have. Is the university is a big part of right. the overall conversation accounted for. Yeah. Well, in the, in the short term, I, I wonder almost if and Bruce Borowski still has that set of, mm -hmm. of, you know, all that material, a lot of it, I think he collected it, maybe even himself, even beforehand. And the question is whether or not the, there might be some use in having him and I don't know if he would provide it to, to uh, Jones group, but it might be some, you know, obviously, but the, the the, more, the the branding of the hill can evolve, but in the short term, we've got we've got a story already. Yeah, we're lucky that it's not just uh, there's a rich history. That there's also kind of a uh, youthful presence as well as um, revitalization going on. So it's it's kind of a great combination. The sense that I get is that we've got multiple organizations all sort of going, who's first? <laughs> who's going to take the first step? Like, who's going to take the big risk and actually start getting momentum going? Um, it's, that's what Visit Boulder was saying today. Mer Hill merchants are like, we just need funding to continue doing the thing we're doing. And I think there's a lot of interest in what could happen, but like, there's, there's also a certain amount of like, who's going to take the first step? Temporary wayfinding only goes so far, right? There's going to be something beyond. Hmm. Well, these will be things to talk about during focus groups with Charlie. Absolutely. Absolutely. We can really get down to it. Could also be things that we talk about with uh, staff. It might be a good segue to our next agenda item. Yeah, how about that, Chris? Thank you. <laughs> I, I just, this is really fruitful conversation because it's, it is really, um, it's upon us. So um, we wanted to make sure I wasn't stifling conversation, so. So, well, as you know, um, Community Vitality manages four different general improvement districts. Two of those are overlap at um, Boulder Junction. Um, we are at a place, uh, different places as far as fund health, and uh, capital planning for all of the districts. Um, and Matt, in his um, current acting role and presumably long-term role, is leading um, uh, alternatives analysis uh, project that is looking at both funding mechanisms for just taking care of what we have, as well as trying to understand what the future uh, desired state is for each of the districts and how um, district funds might be leveraged to help realize those visions. And so um, this is that longer term conversation when it comes to where do we actually want to go? There's a lot of possibility out there. Um, 
uh, we need to narrow it down, narrow in on what we're actually going to do and what's the timeline for actually implementing it. And so that's the, the work is, that is currently being led. So Matt, over to you. Yeah, and I just thank you. have just a few things to say. It won't take a lot of time, but um, you know, this project, you know, we've sort of introduced it in a couple different ways to you, but really at its core, it's a, a financial planning tool that in order to understand the, you know, revenues of all of our districts and what to set taxation at and what the impacts are going to be on businesses and residents from the, um, the revenue that's generated from property tax in particular, um, that lever that we pull, um, we need to understand both the current situation and the future state. And that's going to be quite an undertaking. And so um, the project is uh, narrowing in on some, you know, the specific circumstances that we're experiencing right now, which you know very well what's going on on the Hill that has sort of, sort of been transforming over the years um, from the last time that an examination was really done about these issues. Um, but it's across districts, I mean, in Boulder Junction and downtown as well, there's some common themes, uh, you know, the way that the economy and society has transformed since the pandemic. Um, the retirement of some debt, um, public safety concerns, uh, new opportunities coming online. Uh, there's a lot of inputs. And so um, with all of that in mind, we really want to do this broad examination of, of, of those two elements, current state and future state. Um, and in order to do that, we need to do a couple of things. Uh, we, we need to have the data and understand current conditions really profoundly, deeply. Um, we need to um, reach out and understand what the vision is for services, for programs, and for capital. Um, that capital piece being uh, complex and nuanced, and therefore, you know, so requiring a, a little bit more focus in this project. Um, and also the connections between districts. We need to understand some of the things we've been talking about tonight, about how do people move physically between the districts, what draws them between them, what's the psychological, programmatic connections that bring people back and forth and, and can um, increase activity overall, and broaden those, those assets. So in order to do that, oh wait, I forgot one thing. We also wanna look at the governance of how the districts run, make sure that they're running most efficiently, most effectively to achieve outcomes and, um, and be most effective for the businesses uh, in the district. So, um, so we have uh, a lot of people sort of lined up to engage with us on how to do this. You know, definitely the data is gonna be the foundation of this, but then we also want to have um, some smart people at the helm, luckily, Elliot, Regan, and Christine, who are people much smarter than myself, are hoping to make sure this happens. Um, but we also have a bunch of city departments who have already volunteered to help give input into this. Uh, we're going to assemble a stakeholder group, uh, make sure that people who are um, paying those taxes and affected by the programming are uh, in the room to help us with that visioning. And of course, you, um, we're, we uh, envision a um, subcommittee is in the right word. Each com uh, commission contributing people to serve on, on a super committee, on a super committee. Yeah, yeah. And this is a public meeting. This is getting recorded. <laughs> yeah, that's to this now. Yeah. <laughs> um, on, on Super Tuesday. Right? That's right, no less. <laughs> so um, this is a project that's going to go on uh, for the uh, until the third quarter of next year. Um, we're, we have some things to do immediately and so, some um, work to do to get ready for the, uh, the short-term future and the immediate budget cycle, but we're really aiming uh, third quarter of 2025 to have these recommendations in place. And they're essentially a set of recommendations to you and to city council on how these levers should be adjusted in order to achieve the balance that we want to get our goals accomplished. So I want to give you the opportunity to ask any questions you have about that right now. I apologize, it's kind of rapid fire, but I'm mindful of your timing tonight. Um, but um, in addition to any questions, um, it would be wonderful if you could discuss if um, one or two of you want to represent you can say on the super committee. Um, it won't be meeting for a little while. Um, we'll, we're trying to keep the impact low after that point. Uh, but your input is going to be very critical to making this a success. So, um, you know, after I answer your questions, um, ideally a motion to appoint people to that. 
Yeah, I'm sorry, I might add. So this is just the introduction to the work. Um, uh, certainly welcome uh, to uh, volunteers to be part of whatever it's uh, going to be called. I like alliteration, so I don't know how I feel about super committee, but um, also acknowledging they're going to have two, uh, possibly two new commissioners at the next meeting. So certainly name, we, it'd be nice to have names now, acknowledging that maybe things will shift around um, once we have uh, new commissioners. And it'll certainly be on the agenda for these meetings in the future, so everyone will have a chance to. What is the timing? I mean, in terms, because we don't meet again in, as a commission until May. Um, so just to be clear, like when would you need the names? So we could, um, th there will be some activity between now and May, but it'll be low key. It won't be the, the heavy engagement. So if you want to wait until May, we could certainly do it, if you agree. I'll re really leave it up to you all. Yeah. I think your point's a good one, Chris. That I'm just going to say this for the commission too, is we'll, have potentially two new, definitely one new commissioner. It might be good to consider that in, in this conversation um, and then appoint once we have a full complement of commissioners. So how about we just keep the chair uh, in the loop for now? Great. Um, and then it will evolve as we know more. I think that makes sense. I was gonna volunteer anyway. So why don't we start there and then we can have another discussion in May and figure out if anyone else wants to volunteer. <laughs> Important work. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a fun time. <laughs> any questions for uh, Matt? I don't have any questions right now. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you. Thank important you. work we've got. All right. If well, you don't mind stopping and sharing your screen. Mark, can we get <laughs> that triangle on the yeah. <laughs> I've already fired out yes. message to our public art team. Oh, yeah, I'm trying to go over alleys. We got it. It's prioritizing. <laughs> it's way of trying every day. So it's so like, we got to do something about it. Can we buy the gas station, guys? <laughs> wow. Define way. Um, <laughs> we, yeah. Uh, that concludes matters from staff. Thank you, Chris. Thank I you. appreciate that. Thank you, staff, uh, for all those updates. We are not a matters from commissioners. Um, this first one, feedback from commissioners. Rockwell and Sorry, Jones. Sorry, apologies. apologies. Yes, not Bush. It was actually Tell Jones. Um, and I met with Chris uh, a few weeks ago to talk financials. I realized I didn't really understand the financials very well. So I really appreciate you walking us through some of that stuff. But there was also, we wanted to address some of the things that we've said in commission meetings before about getting momentum around ideas and stuff. How do we... How do we make sure that there is a champion of it all, so to speak, um, that's helping move things forward? Chris had a suggestion that I think we both, I, I definitely thought was interesting, which is we, we only meet as a commission every quarter, essentially, so every, every couple of months. And that's not a lot of time to get things done. And anytime you get two or, or more of us in a room, it ends up being a public meeting. And so there's a lot of levers and mechanisms that need to come into play that make it messy. So the suggestion was that perhaps the city already meets regarding matters of the Hill on a monthly basis, do I miss correct? Oh, more often than that. More often than that. <laughs> on a regular basis. Yes, regular basis. And then it may provide an opportunity for two commissioners to attend one of those less public meetings to just get a sense of what staff are working on, and also then have an opportunity for some synergies of um, people's opinions and how things might happen. Um, what I put out there was I'd be willing, again, volunteering to, as chair, end up doing each one of those with then a rotating cast of an additional uh, commissioner that would join me in, in those, those meetings. So that's the framing for this conversation. I wanted to bring it up with this group and see if others felt the same way about that, if there was an alternate idea, um, if there was another way of approaching it. Um, so there you go. The idea on the table is uh, attending regular city staff meetings um, as a way of providing meat to the sandwich of official commission meetings. And the, on the alternating months. So right. we have a meeting in March. And so there would be this um, 
uh, smaller meeting in April, and then uh, a public meeting in May. Thank you, Chris. I, I agree. I mean, it used to be a monthly meeting, and it felt more like a, a working meeting where we could move things forward. I think you have been on the commission when they were monthly, right? Were you ever on that monthly cycle? No, no. Um, and that was a concern when we did shift from monthly meetings to you know, less quarter quarterly meetings that, that the role of the commission kind of changed a little. But I, I like where you're going because um, I do think it, it can be, it would have been very difficult to get to where we are now with a quarterly meeting system because there was just more commission work being done. Everything from the getting the height restriction um, exempted from the hill and getting uh, commissioners and people to show up to city council meetings and the moratorium. And um, there was more immediacy, I think. There were more things that needed to be worked on um, at that point. So I kind of see what you're saying. And we're, we're, we also have a lot of work to do now. I, my two cents are giving it a thumbs up and I think uh, it, there's no harm in trying it at a minimum, right? Okay. You know, let's let's see what see how it works. And if staffs want to go, if if that works with staff, <laughs> yeah, because it's a it's a I'm sure it's a little bit of an extra extra pull for. It's a lot better than having a formal meeting. <laughs> yeah. Well, and that was this is sort of a compromise, right, yeah. between yeah. having another formal meeting and doing this, and it feels it felt to me like a great suggestion, Chris, that there, there is this more, what we can do is have a regular conversation about it. it's happening every few weeks versus where we are right now. And there's so much that's going to happen in the next right. two years that it feels like an increased cadence makes sense. And who, I would hope that a few years from now, it wouldn't be that necessary. Precisely. So making it less formal ends up helping with that point. Yeah. Sounds great. Okay. Any other, yeah, any other thoughts before? Because we are nearing time here. I wanna okay, I'm gonna move to the next agenda item then. We don't need to vote on that, do we? That's no, the thing we can um, just do. I, we, we would request some guidance. Would you be comfortable with uh, the rotation just being alphabetical by last name as far as the plus one um, with the chair? I'm comfortable with that. Okay. If, if someone isn't available, you go to the next one. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Sounds good to me. I was already looking at calendars today. So I thought, depending on staff's availability and your availability, I was looking just at the first week of every other month, which might, you know, be good timing wise. So yeah, maybe uh, just let us know what that timing looks like so that I can. That was going to be my next question, whether you can do a three or a four, or what's, you know. It'll look better day, yeah. Okay. Um, okay. And yeah, well, because we do have, we do have regular meetings, so there might be some, there might be some that's already established. We just want to add a couple of those, too. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much, and thank you, Chris, for the suggestion. I think it was a really solid one. Um, okay, and then we had the city council request. It's like we finally got into the, the meat here of something that we would need, we need to make an amendment to. So we have in front of us on paper um, a letter drafted from the commission with three main points. And I'm hoping everyone has read this. We did have a presentation from the um, Hill Merchants Association tonight as well. And there was some thought of potentially making adjustments to this letter. My, my thought, I, I, it was not clear to me that item three was that distinguished from item one, mm. which led, which, which 
seems to me that item three could really become a little more focused on the business develop supporting business development, marketing of the hill. Because we've got cleanliness and foot, we could sort of even work foot traffic into one a little bit, maybe. I don't know, because cleanliness, but sure. regardless, uh, you know, activation, but maybe emphasizing a bit more in the heading. I mean, you could say support business development um, um, on the University Hill. Um, uh, in anticipation of increased foot traffic in the hotels. And then just put in a sentence. It's, it's written pretty well already. We just throw in a sentence about you know funding for the hill, which is the hill which has been critical to date, and now even more so, right? And it could even, I mean, city council might like it if there was a benefit. A, a, community neighborhood benefit, UNA, because UNA is very vocal with city council. And if we could tie in that this would benefit not just the commercial district, but it's also been a desire of um, the neighborhood, kind of showing a little more um, consideration that the commercial district is sensitive to the needs and desires of the neighborhood as well. I don't know how you say that, but so, we, so do we wordsmith that tonight, or do we? This is a good question. I, when did, is this needed for City Council? March twenty second. So tonight is your night to have a quorum to make the formal motion in support of the language. If we want it to be a, is there a means of? Uh, is there a way for us to work by email, or is that because it's a meeting then? And, We'd have to get super, super creative because you can't vote over email. So there might be a way to um, have a motion uh, with a uh, general approval with some caveats and, and um, discussion. Um, and then we can make those edits and distribute that via email and if no one objects, you know, to the to those edits, then we can lean on the vote. What could we authorize the chair uh, to, or a or a two member uh, group to, with the caveats to finalize the letter? It's so not that it, you know, it's that doesn't be a perfect science because it's it's not the UN. But it's a letter. Um, it is a letter. So we're just trying to make sure that we're, you know, that folks feel like what, what they voted on is what we're actually transmitting to council. Mm -hmm. And I, I just don't want to deviate too far from that. So I totally, I, I, I do not love uh, wordsmithing and editing letters in a public meeting. So I, I totally appreciate that desire to not do that. Mm -hmm. um, Could we... Um, <laughs> If there's a way that section you... one, two, and three show support and um, approve the uh, not sentiment, I'm trying to think of the right word, but the essence of one, two, and three, and the priority and um, the points without having to yeah. go deep into actual words. Yes, thing. I would just ask that the motion can really specifically say, and you were getting at it, the changes related to, I think item three in support of the business community. We just wanna make sure that on the record, we have really specific um, language of what you'd like to see with those edits and then we can make sure that it's reflect that the ultimate letter is actually reflect, 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 reflect. So let's let's have a discussion there about what what we would want to add in terms of supporting the Hill Merchants Association. So we're clear on that because that's the thing we have. So a couple of knowns. They are making an ask of twenty thousand dollars per year. For three years. For three years. 
Is that so the city council really is focusing on two years, right? Or, or no. Even, so the right. budget can only by by code can only be approved in one year. So we're just going to have to say twenty thousand dollars per. And the alternative would be to just give them thirty thousand dollars up front, we're talking about a half a million dollar budget. So yeah, um, that they need to then plan out over three years, but. Um, I, I don't know that council's going to ask for more. You can build the dive too deep into those details. The point is just to continue the twenty thousand dollar funding that they're we're talking about. It's not like we're asking for new money, right. but, but it's, it's not. But it's, it's, not, but it's, it's not the sources. actual regular funding is ten thousand. It's just the ARPA funds were the other ten thousand. Right. So one we know goes away. The other could go away. If that makes sense. But are we just asking for like support for that? Or are we asking for more economic firepower for the hill in general? It's like the more funding in general. Yeah, it's a good clarifying point. Yeah, because I don't think we want to just leave it to elders to leave for time. I mean, the, the district needs money and support. So the district is Boulder's problem now, it needs some money. Some real attention and some probably some real funding from the general fund to help with some of this stuff. So current, currently, the general fund does a transfer of two hundred and seventy thousand dollars a year. It's one of the largest revenue sources in Tuyuji. Right. Yeah, that two hundred thing the same this year. Uh, well, yeah. this year, twenty twenty four, yes, because this year has been appropriated and, okay. and approved for twenty twenty five. It's being developed. So TBD. I don't anticipate any significant changes there, but TBD. Right, we don't know until we know. Um, that being said, that two hundred and seventy thousand dollars is not specifically identified as this, 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 and this. There is no earmark ten k for Hill Merchant Association. So, I think we have the authority within just staff uh, suggestions on and how that money gets to be. So I don't know. I think it'd be good to highlight that there's an importance that there continues to be an investment into business support on a hill. But I don't think we need to necessarily dive into the actual details of saying we need X for X and X and X, because we're not really asking for additional appropriation. This is more a conversation between commissioners and staff. As far as that level of detail, of yes. minutia. But so your first your first responsibility as the commission is to the fund health. And so if we don't, is so looking at the fund financials and staff has been working hard to make sure that our uses of funds is less than our sources of funds. Um, if we wanted to, I mean, we have so we have some wiggle room there. Um, so it's we could spend ten thousand dollars more um, from our existing sources of funds right. on the hill merchants without engaging city council. So long as you know that uh, the fund um, is staying healthy, ten thousand dollars more is not going to make it or break it. But it's there's trade-offs there. And so we don't even specifically have to say we would like the city to continue to support this nonprofit on the hill. But, we want, but we want to, to broaden the broaden the and then it would be, you know. Yeah, I think so broadening that approach and saying that's better. Right. I don't think yeah. you need to specifically call an organization. It's kind of puts you in one. I'm not saying there's anything wrong. Hill merchant, you need to be no, calling but, I mean that could, you know, what the investment is, had a nonprofit organization and wanted funding. You know, right. I think it's it could get get sticky there. I think. Yeah. The important part here is that you want to continue to see um, advertising support for the businesses within the Hill University. So is it just simple then as saying, it, you know, uh, you know, in, inserting a phrase along the lines of it, at a minimum, maintain current funding levels for, what would, how would we word that? Where do we want to ask for more funding on top of the general fund? No, it's just not funding. Well, we could say, at a, you know, increase support, given this, and at a minimum, maintain current. Can we say that? Or, or avoid any loss of... Because we we want to like draw that line, right? You know, sure we're asking for more, but you can't. You can't. Well, they can, but that's that's our point. Well, I mean, how would you? How would you? I mean, your staff. How? I mean, you're the ones that. How? How? What? What language would be appropriate? Business support and retention, right? Uh, I don't know if we're talking about. I would honestly focus less on the money. 
and more on the intent. Okay. And, and what, 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 what do you want to see done? And that's what I would put in this letter. I wouldn't specifically call out where the sources are coming from. I think what council needs to know is what are the commissioners seeing as the top three priorities, excuse me, within their district? It's kind of up to council and staff to figure out the funding mechanisms and how council prioritizes the, the needs from other commissioners, right? They just need to know what's the most important for you. And I think that's really what we should highlight here in this letter is, is that the, the business retention, the business advertising, getting people up into the hill, those are gonna be the most important things. It's gonna have, you know, there's replications across the entire organization for that, right? Sales tax goes up, those types of things. We increase tourism, so on and so forth. So less about worry about the money and where it's coming from and more about what's the intent. What are the top three priorities? That's what I would focus on. So given that, and given Chris, one of Chris's earlier suggestions and staff knowledge here, should we just have staff, they've got it, right? Is have them come back with and say, do you object? Any objections and have you, have you, cause you're gonna write the letter we already, we, we already wrote the letter. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we, we want it to be representative of your. So does system. the letter need to change if the intentions are already within the <coughs> priorities? Great question. You think it's all covered here already? Um, yes, I would say that with uh, all the folks that are going to make this all happen are here. Um, and we don't, we don't need council to, to opine on $10,000 so we can um, make sure that if yeah. that's the will of the, I mean, we'll, our next meeting will be starting to talk about budget, right? So we can, if you're not happy with how we've responded on our budget conversations as, as far as the Hill merchants, then we'll, there's opportunity for that. Yeah. Um, is, does the prioritization matter, the one, two, three, is that, is that, yeah. I brought that up just okay. because, you know, I'm a very like, you know, I'm, I'm just a caveman with a caveman brain. That's like, really easy for us to change in emotion. So, yeah. Uh, so. <laughs> if others agree, I mean, I brought that up more as like, a, well, if we put it first, maybe it gets more attention. But that was also kind of reflecting a different understanding of what may or may not be happening here. I don't know that we're adjusting the only, language. The only word that I struggle with on number three is preparing because. That seems really short term to me, and I think that's going to be an ongoing consideration. And so is there a word that's, that reflects an ongoing need more than prepare? I mean, prepare says it. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to go there. It's just I get worried that. And the, the, I would note the prompt from not the council done, was kind of thing. Was, more near term. It wasn't asking for the long term stuff. It was asking for in the next one to two years, what are the top three um, issues? Well, and that makes sense. This Could it be prepared? Conferences aren't going to start until early 2026 anyway, because they're not even accepting conferences till early 26. I mean, preparing could work. I, I threw preparedness for the University Hill District. I, I don't know. Um, it, it's one word. Go for it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. readiness for readiness. 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 Thank you. Yeah. 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 Let's do readiness. Readiness. Think about it. Readiness. Okay. Of, and then we're good. There you go. Perfect. There you go. Go ahead. One more word. One more. One more word. <laughs> oh, no, just in. So, are, so I guess the two questions, are we going to keep them in this order? Do we want to move that to the top? You know, because the, the park and the redevelopment plan feels- Glad to move that to the top. Feels less I would urgent support. because we're gonna do it. Yeah. But it's, it's not, I would put the readiness piece as the single biggest problem we face right now. I tend to agree with that. Other commissioners, yeah, I agree. Okay. I agree. And, and then just real quick on the cleanliness and safety for an inviting, uh, absolutely important. Do we want to add, considering Charlene and everybody's real concern for conference planners, do we just want to 
yes, they're visitors, but do we want to add conference planners to residents, visitors, and businesses alike? Only because it's yes. such a huge mm -hmm. make it, or break. It drives, it, yeah, I just wanted to remind council that, that is a thought. big deal. Yeah. Did you hear that? Yeah. Um, so we want to add conference planners to the list. Um, where's that at? Residents, visitors is in the third line of number two. Attracting us to residents, visitors, conference planners, and businesses. Like Maybe conferences. Conferences, mm -hmm. thank you. Yeah, that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. So, oh, number one is italicized. I see. Yes, thank you for we noticing. Will, it's right. Be crazy. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I would never leave that. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Don't, don't worry sure. about it. Yeah. Okay, it, are we good with this language? Are we fine with staff's recommendation that this covers what we heard earlier this evening? And do I hear a motion to accept the letter as presented here on the screen? So I have a motion. Second. I have a second. Okay. Any discussion around this? Is there anything we missed? Any anxiety around this? Great, I'm gonna call a vote then. All those in favor of approving the letter as presented on the screen here, say aye. 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 Any dissent? No? Okay, that was unanimous. So that's just happened. All right. Thank you so much. <laughs> really appreciate it. Bet. Okay, so one last thing before we exit this conversation and adjourn. Um, in terms of the budget conversation and specifically for the Hurt Hill merchants, this is something that in May we may bring up specifically as a commission. And, yeah. and is it something we'll end up voting on and approving? Or is this just something that we can work with staff on to have done? You can work with staff to make sure that. Okay, yeah. great. Is that something that we shouldn't be communicating after the May meeting? Because it will, so the budget's not official until okay. um, council approves it in October. So worst case scenario, we, build a budget that is taking this into consideration and then um, sales tax receipts um, decline significantly between now and October. Mm -hmm. And we end up finding ourselves in a space where we have to build a new budget. It was, you know, be planning for a different reality. So then, you know, there, there, there's, it's not certain until council has okay. voted on it, but Understood. we will plan for, we can plan for um, a budget that includes an addition, you know, yeah. continuing that ten thousand dollars from different sources. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Giving the dollar amount is it's not something that I'd be super concerned about. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. Appreciate that. Anything else from commissioners? I just have one, one quick, quick thing. Just going back to Mary Alice's comment, the geofencing for the line scooters. Who? How do we move that thing? So transportation leads all of the micro mobility initiatives. I know that they are creating a geofencing requirement for the Hill neighborhood. So, so they're not sure where that is at. They're actually presenting to so downtown management commission been asking about this. Um, so they're actually presenting at the DMC. Transportation is presenting next week at the DMC. Um, I imagine we can forward you the memo. Um, Transportation is prepared, but I think it includes some of this information. Okay. I just it'd be good to just solve that one quick because it's almost impossible to park one downtown, but it feels like you could put it pretty much anywhere on the wall. So, right, you could just check that one. Okay. Our next meeting is Tuesday, May 7th at 4 p.m. in this very room, I believe. Um, thank you, staff, for your time. I'm sorry we ran over today. <laughs> Um, and if there's nothing else, we're adjourning our meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.